All right, in this video, we're gonna be going over one of the part 107 questions that you might see on your test. This one having to do with latitude and longitude on sectional charts. So in this problem, we're asked to refer to this figure and determine the approximate latitude and longitude of Curita County Airport. And then just like with all the other questions for part 107 tests, we're given three options, the multiple choice question. What my advice would be with sectional chart problems is not to look at the solutions first. Sort of figure out the problem, figure out the solution on your own, and then see if one of your answers matches up with the answer that you got. If you look at the answers first, I find that you, you make jumps or assumptions that you wouldn't normally. So I think organically coming to the answer rather than picking among the choices is really your best bet. With latitude and longitude, so if this is your first time looking at a sectional chart, you might be overwhelmed, as I was very overwhelmed when I looked at these first. There's so much information here, right? It's kind of like, how can anyone get anything meaningful from this chart? Well, you have to know what you're looking for and pick out those important pieces of information. So the, an the question is asking for this Currituck County Airport, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. So within the problem, sometimes it'll tell you an area to look in. These charts can be pretty big, there's a lot of information on them, so area 3 tells us where we should be looking, so we find that little red circle with a 3 in it. Currituck Airport should be in here, and yep, it is right here. That's where the airport is. And now we need to figure out the latitude and longitude using the information provided to us in the chart. So one really helpful thing is you'll see within these charts we have this line of latitude that's labeled 37 degrees okay and then we also have this line of longitude i'll just do this part of it this line of longitude that's labeled 76 degrees. So when I was looking at this problem originally, I almost didn't see this 76. It's so buried underneath all this information, so you really kind of had to look for it. But these two labels are really going to help us out with this problem. So I think it helps if we sort of take a step back from this problem and we isolate the concepts of latitude and longitude by themselves. These same two lines I've drawn out here on a simplified version of the sectional chart. So we don't have any of that airport information, we don't have any landmarks, we don't have any geography, it's just those latitude and longitude lines, and up is north here. Let's sort of talk about latitude and longitude first. You might recall, maybe learning in school somewhere, that the equator is at zero degrees latitude. So if our equator is, the latitude is zero degrees, as we move to the top of the globe, the North Pole, our latitude is going to be increasing all the way up until 90 degrees. And then as we move down to the South Pole, it's going to decrease. So this is going to be, uh, this is going to be negative 90 at the bottom down there. So why is this important to know? Well, it's important to know because this 37 is the only label that they give you within this entire sectional chart. Right, so there's this other horizontal line here, but they don't actually give you a label for it. So you have to know whether this line below means that we're decreasing our latitude or increasing our latitude. And the same thing is true for longitude. However, longitude, you can sort of just think of it as you go west, as like the settlers settled west is the way that I learned it. As you go west, you increase. As you go east, you decrease. Now we know which way it's increasing. So up here somewhere we have 38 degrees. Down here somewhere we have 36 degrees. That'll be helpful. Now let's sort of talk about these tick marks alongside our latitude and longitude lines. So you'll see that there's one, two, three, four, five. On the fifth tick mark, it's slightly longer than when we get to the 10th tick mark. It's also even longer than the fifth tick mark and it extends below the baseline of our latitude line. For this example, I've highlighted them in different colors, but uh, if we looked at an actual line, here is where our fifth tick mark is and here is where our 10th tick mark, so you can see that height difference. So why is this helpful? Well, 
sometimes you have to be counting a lot of these tick marks and as much as I love counting by one, it's much easier to count by fives or tens. When we're figuring out the latitude and longitude of something on a map, we can use these tick marks to count faster. And then what are these actual ticks? What is this unit of measure? Well, that would be what's called a minute. Within a degree, there are 60 minutes. One degree. So what that means is every single one of these tick marks is a minute. And once we reach 60 minutes, we're going to have moved down one degree of latitude or longitude. What this means for us is if we go down, if we go south, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 minutes, we're not actually at 36 degrees yet. We're at 36 degrees and 30 minutes. Right. Do you see how we've taken 37, 37 degrees, we've subtracted 30 minutes, and now we have 36 degrees and 30 minutes. If we go down another 30 minutes, 45, 50, 55, 60, then we can say that we've now reached 36 degrees latitude. So if we compare this back to our sectional chart, Remember when I pointed out this line here? Don't be confused and think that that's 36 degrees. This is 36 degrees and 30 minutes. And I knew that because I counted out these tick marks. 5, 10, 15, 20, uh, something somewhere in here, 25, 30. So between those two lines, there's 30 minutes, which means that it's not a whole degree. And you can apply this same sort of logic to our lines of longitude. So if we went 30 minutes east, we would, we would hit 70 degrees, 30 minutes. If we went 30 degrees in this direction, we would hit 76 degrees, 30 minutes. All right, so I think we sort of have all the baseline ideas behind lines of latitude and longitude. So now we can actually start looking at this problem. So now we need to figure out how far away our airport, which is right here, how far away it is from these established lines of latitude and longitude that we've determined. So for our line of uh, longitude, we have this 76 degrees. For our line of latitude, we have this 36 degrees, 30 minutes. So if we went down from our 36 degrees, 30 minutes line of latitude, we'd see that the airport is about one, two, three, four, five, six. It's about six minutes south from that line. How many minutes to the west it is from our line of longitude, we'd see it's about one minute west. So we would take that line, 36 degrees, 30 minutes, and we would subtract six minutes from it, and we would get that our airport is at 36 degrees, 24 minutes north. So that's our line of latitude. And then remember that this vertical line, our line of longitude is at, um, is at 76 degrees. And we could say that it's zero minutes. So we would add one minute, remember, because as we go west, our longitude increases. So we're going west one minute. So now we're at 76 degrees in one minute west is our line of longitude. So now we can take these calculations and we can compare them to the answers that we have. 36 degrees, 24 minutes north, 76 degrees, one degree west. Looks like A is our correct answer. Now let's look at the rest of them and see why they wouldn't work. So here we've got 36 degrees, 48 degrees, 48 minutes north. That wouldn't work because we are below the 36 degree, 30 minute line. So we want to be subtracting four. So this is incorrect. Let's compare this one here, 47 degrees, 24 minutes north, 47 degrees. Well, yeah, this, this just won't be right. Remember, we are south of this 37 degree latitude line. So that means we're going to be decreasing. And remember that we're in presumably somewhere in North America. If we go south, 
we're going to be decreasing our latitude, not going to be this 47 degree either. So using what we've learned, let's go ahead and take a look at this next problem. What airport is located approximately 47 degrees, 40 minutes north latitude and 101 degrees, 26 minutes west longitude? So with this problem, I want to let you have the opportunity to solve it before I solve it for you so that you can sort of check your understanding. So I've linked this picture, this figure in the description box. Feel free to try it out on your own. And then to double check your answers, go ahead and come back to this video and see if you got it right. So once again, uh, we could look at where these airports are located on our sectional charts. I'm gonna go ahead and just skip over that because I don't want the answer I come to organically to be tarnished by the answers we have available. It makes me feel more confident in my answer if I find the answer and then compare it to the answers I find within the possible answers and one of the matches. So let's go ahead and make these lines super thick again. So there's our 48 degree line. Here is our 101 degree. 47 degrees 40 minutes so because we are presumably in north america as we go north our line of latitude is going to increase as we go south our line of latitude is going to decrease we can assume that our airport is going to be below our 48 degree line of latitude okay so it says 47 degrees 40 minutes so we want to go 20 minutes south of our 48 degree line of latitude so we can go ahead and check out those big tick marks so here's a five here's a ten here's another five another ten so it looks like if we go 20 minutes south it would be 5 10 15 20 here is where our latitude is going to be all right and then we want 101 degrees 26 minutes west so remember as we go west we're going to be increasing our line of longitude and as we go east, we're going to be decreasing. So if this thick line is our 101 degree line of longitude, that means that we're going to want to go west. And we're gonna to wanna to go west by about 26 minutes. So uh, if we look at our big tick marks, five, 10, this one, 15, 20, 25, 26 is going to be right here. So now we just need to make these two connect. Our answer shall be clear to us. So here we go. Hopefully it's starting to come together. X marks the spot. We have Garrison Airport as those lines of latitude and longitude. And is that one of the answers? And yes, it is. Garrison Airport is located at these lines of latitude and lines of longitude. That's how you solve lines of latitude, lines of longitude problems. Hopefully that helped out a little bit. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and I will respond to them. And as always, have an amazing day.